Hey now, Adam. Hey, what's up? What are we talking about here? Looks like we got a Peter Zahan video. We got Zahan. Now you got me listening to Zahan. I will say he's a very interesting guy. He uses very interesting takes on political issues. And I thought this was fascinating. He says Donald Trump has no chance of winning the election. You know, he's made this prediction months and months and months ago. So he's kind of doubling down on this. Trump doesn't have a shot. Biden's going to win. I think people are probably telling him, you're crazy. Trump is destroying Biden in the polls. So he keeps yes. giving uh, yes. additional information why he thinks Trump is going to lose. And I, I got to admit, he's got unique angles that you don't really hear in the mainstream media. So it is fascinating. Yeah, I don't know if I buy his argument that he's about to lay out, we're going to listen to it, but it is a, it's an interesting argument. And I am it, like, if his prediction comes true and if it comes true for the reason he's laying out here, then I will like bow down to his mighty wisdom. <laughs> we'll okay. see because we'll you're see. right. Everyone is saying, you know, Donald Trump is killing in the polls. Joe Biden is getting annihilated in the polls. There's no way Biden can win, you know? So, you know, but let's, it, uh, let's see. The thing is, this guy's a numbers guy. And all yeah. those other people are just poll watchers. So, right. Yeah. And right. he's, I don't know if he says it in this video, but he has said in other videos why he believes the polls are off. And he also, he gives deference to us, the independents, the kingmakers. Right. So I don't think he does it in this video, but we might cover that video too. So let's jump, right. let's jump into the clip. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Party. So for example, um, Republicans versus Democrats. The Republicans have always had a numerical disadvantage because they just don't have as many voters. They don't have as many factions. You've got uh, the pro-lifers, the military voters, the law and order voters, uh, business voters, for example. Um, and the reason that this faction, despite having fewer numbers than the Democrats, has always done relatively well is because their issues in play typically don't clash. The pro-lifers really don't care about business regulation. The business community really doesn't care about military policy and so on. So you have a smaller coalition, but a very solid coalition, a very reliable coalition, and everybody shows up to vote every time. So he makes a very interesting argument here. He says that the Republicans are outnumbered in sheer number of voters, but they're reliable mm -hmm. voters and their issues don't clash as much as Democratic issues clash. So Right. And that Very cool. seems to be the case. I mean, that's usually why, you know, you see the Democrats are far more like wanting to lower the restrictions for voting right. because they feel yes. like there's like a bunch of untapped Democrat voters out there. Republicans usually are not in favor of lowering restrictions of voting. because so they feel like as you know, that that's not the case, that it's actually just helping the Democrats. So this is I mean, this part's probably true. I do agree with this. And low voter turnout has generally gone in favor of the Republicans election yes. after election after yes. election. So this thesis seems sound to me. Right. And so even though they don't have as many members, you know what you're going to get in each electoral cycle. And if you can pull a few independents, you're good to go. The Democrats have a different sort of system. They've thrown a very, very wide net indeed. And I'm oversimplifying here a little bit, but they basically have a three-part coalition minorities, coastal, highly educated elites, and organized labor. And the, the problem with that coalition is when you start running on the issues and talking about the specifics of policy during a campaign, it's very difficult to have anything that all three of those factions agree upon. So for example, those coastal educated elites, in order to get rid of racism, they started coming up with new terms to call people, which, you know, we usually call racist, but whatever. Anyway, Latinx <laughs> is my personal favorite, has no root in any Latin culture and something like 97% of Hispanics find it either pointless or a little offensive, but they tried to push it anyway. And so you got a split on social issues among those two groups. So that's the... Coastal elites and the minorities basically breaking up there over Latinx, which I yeah, completely specifically the Hispanic agree about. Yeah. 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 I, I haven't, the only people of the Latin community I've ever heard of like Latinx are like the young, hyper woke, uh, you know, socialist progressive types who don't vote anyway. <laughs> right. Well, they, they might be in the coastal elite. They might just be in both groups. They're right. like a minority and coastal elite. You know, you talk to anyone of, uh, you know, Latin or Hispanic descent who's like, you know, 30, 40, 50, and they're like, Latinx, what, what the heck are you talking about? 
which if the polls are correct, Trump seems to be killing it with uh, the Latin community. Latin doesn't right. sound right. What is it? the Latino Hispanic. community? That's yes. it. Yeah. Uh, another great example is the Green Revolution, which obviously the coastal educated folks are really big on. Uh, but the unions are not so much because most of those jobs are not going to be unionized. So whenever you get a candidate who is a little brainy and who runs on the issues, someone like Michael Dukakis or Hillary Clinton, you know, tries to make practical pledges during a campaign, you're going to start an internecine fight and they're going to have entire chunks of the Democratic electorate that just don't show up at all. And it's very hard to win that way. What they need to win is a charismatic candidate who doesn't really talk about anything real at all. And that's why Barack Obama did so well. So this is the dyad that we have been faced. So this is very interesting because, you know, we had a talk with Joe Goodlogic recently and we were kind of asking him, you know, why do you think uh, Vivek is having so much trouble compared to Trump when Vivek's trying to be like mini Trump? And Joe gave a very good and I think interesting answer where he said kind of the exact same thing that Peter Zahan saying here where, you know, Trump would very often you know, when you ask him a question, how are you going to solve like the Ukraine Russia crisis? Right. He just says, I'm going to solve it on day one. He doesn't right, we're going to figure like, it out. Right. We're going to figure it out. Right. He just kind of like runs on his like personality. He doesn't really give a lot of specific policies. You know, his big policy was like the very simplistic, like build the wall. Right. And Mexico sure. pays for it. You know, Vivek has all these little plans and all these ideas which, you know, we hope is a good idea, you know, or I mean, like you hope, what I mean is you hope candidates run on policies, but people don't like that because you want to have as broad appeal as possible. And so if you give these big, vague answers and you run on your personality, everyone can listen to what you're saying and they just impart their own answer to the question and assume you're going to do it. Yeah, this they is like you. the perfect example is Trump on abortion. Abor he's basically saying my policy is we're going to figure it out and it's going to be something you're you're personally going to be very happy with which yeah. allows you to insert <laughs> right. whatever policy you want right right because I'm what not gonna policy tell you what is, it is yeah yeah you know, what policy is going to make you personally happy well it's going to be different for everybody right <laughs> some people want no exceptions some people want exceptions some people want you know uh, certain dates some people want different dates so yeah it's the way Trump does that is politically genius. Right. And it's interesting because he's saying that, you know, the Democrats have this, you know, had this problem because they have these different factions that have far, like, not only do they have different things that they focus on, but the things that they focus on actually clash with each other. Right. Yes. Policies become contradictory and you run right. into big trouble. You've seen for the last 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Now, under normal circumstances, the Republicans have an advantage here because there are very few issues that are wedge issues within their own coalition. But what Donald Trump has done is shaken up the race and introduced a number of wedge issues, not just across society, but across the Republican electorate. And we now have any number of candidates who are, I don't know if to say that they're in Trump's pocket is the, how about in Trump's corner? There we go. Uh, that really break up the decision-making process for voters. So uh, my personal favorite, or guy I love to hate the most, was Tommy Tuberville, who for months this year prevented military promotions in order to get his way on abortion policy. Those are two factions, military voters and abortion voters, who never had anything to fight about before, and all of a sudden they're at each other's necks. Uh, he, Donald Trump has driven the business community out of the coalition, because he basically doesn't like it when people tell him no, or when they say yes, but Mr. President, he wanted the adoration. That was it. And so you have the business community that is now completely alienated from the social conservative voters. And in this sort of environment, the Republicans are facing a democratic style cohesion test. The problem here is that the Republicans don't have as many voters as the Democrats. And even if they pass the cohesion test, then they have to deal with all the other things that Donald Trump brings to the table. So they're not going to have their entire coalition showing up if Donald Trump becomes the candidate. And that means just on the numbers, there's no way that Donald Trump can win. And that's before you consider the independence. We're going to do that in a different video. We should cover that video too, but not right now. We'll cover it mm -hmm. at a later time. 
So he's got, also, I noticed the business community is probably upset about the immigration stuff as well because they want obviously cheap labor. They've been right. This, this has been their goal with immigration in the Republican Party forever. So there's a conflict there as well. Yeah, I mean, and this is all a lot of what's happening right now is because you know the populist movement takes hold in America when you know people are not satisfied with you know the economic political policies that are been happening for the last 10 20 years and it's interesting because you know when i was growing up it was always the left crying and complaining about big business being the enemy and now we're kind of seeing the right complain about big business also being the enemy though like now it's kind of more focused through the lens of like wokeness like the big businesses are all woke but it definitely stems from i think some economic concerns yeah um but so the, the thing that's kind of interesting to me about this prediction, um, and I don't know if I, I'm not sure I believe it, but basically his argument that he's saying is like, or what I what I believe he would say is like, okay, so you have like 60 to 80%, even if you had like 80%, okay, 75, 80% of the Republican party, like diehard Trump people, if they all show up, it still wouldn't be enough to beat Biden because they just wouldn't get high enough turnout. Right. Because the Democrats have such a larger coalition. Right. And it was only the cohesion of the Republican Party that basically was able to overcome that. Um, and now you have this because you have, you know, the business people are maybe not so enamored with Trump. You know, I don't really like the example, you know, he brings with Tavi Tuberville, who I agree is an idiot. Um, and I understand like the whole like, you know, he's withholding military promotions for abortion, which is stupid. It makes no sense. But I mean, just like, just like military people, like the people who are like really big, like military people, and like they're just like walking around voters. Like, is that an issue they care about? Like, oh, Tommy Tuberville, like upheld, you know, military promotions. Is that like, are people talking about that? Do they care about that? They probably do in those communities. The military mm -hmm. families, I mean, that's a very close knit community. So mm -hmm. if they're complaining about withholding military pay, look, the military runs on loyalty. The right. idea that someone is not getting their paychecks, even if you are getting your paychecks, that that hurts with them. And I'm, it, it could definitely be a, an effect. We're just not seeing it. Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Is it's like, like what he's talking about. This call could be happening, and no one's really reporting on it or seeing it because, like, you would just keep seeing that Donald Trump's favorability is going up, his poll numbers are going up, but that wouldn't clearly register the problem that he's talking about. Right. Um, where there's going to be this, you know, chunk of the Republican Party that doesn't show up to vote. Right. Especially if they're surveying likely voters. Right. Because they're literally surveying the people who are going to show up no matter what. Yeah. And then you combine on top of this, all the January 6th stuff, which is going to put, it's going to, you know, put some people uh, out from voting. It's going to, you know, more people are not going to vote. Let's just say January 6th didn't pick up Trump any votes. Okay. It lost to votes. I don't, he didn't pick up anyone. He increased some people's devotion and diehardness, but he didn't pick up any votes from January 6th. And I think a lot of the court cases will turn off kind of the swing voter types that are happening regardless of the outcome. And so I don't know. It's what he's saying. He, he's laying out a very interesting theory here. And if it's true, I will give him mad props, but I'm still. I, I don't know. I'm still I'm still kind of skeptical of it all. Trump is trying to keep the coalition together. What we talked about on abortion is the perfect example because right. you can see he does realize there is some fracturing going on that is going to ultimately hurt him. And I don't know if you listened to the town hall he was in, but he talked specifically about abortion for this reason. He's mm -hmm. he's he's saying that. If they lose, and he didn't come out and say it, but but close enough, he's saying that if if the abortion, the single issue voters don't show up, it's going to hurt them competitively, not just in this election, but in all elections going forward. And I'm not sure the Republican Party has really come to grips with that yet. Hmm, you could be right. I yeah. mean, I think Trump's right. I think you know you predicted the abortion issue as we both predicted the abortion issue is going to really hurt the republican party um though of course there's other things 
you know, we have the immigration problem right now. I think it's really going to hurt the Democrats. Uh, the Israel stuff maybe will hurt with the young voters about whether they turn out or not. And now, you know, I think some of the MMT people are, are predicting the economy is going to go down this year. Yeah. So, I mean, there's lots of lots of factors that can uh, definitely weigh in here as we get closer and closer to the election. A lot going on, but a super interesting theory. And any final thoughts on it? We'll see. We'll see if you have any final thoughts. Yes. <laughs> Hi, you just listened to a Sitch and Adam recorded video. That's right. We're doing Monday through Friday deep dive recorded videos now. And of course, we're still doing our live streams. Our live streams are on Sunday and Tuesday starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And you can super chat us. Or you can join the channel. Subscribe to this channel right here to watch the live show or watch more of our awesome deep dive videos.